What's up guys, Jay right here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Crossout. Today I'm back again in the test server and I wanted to take a look at some of the new items that we're getting and some of the new features as well. For example, we got three slots here for vehicles. We got one for Leviathans, we got one for our armored car and one for the helicopter. Whichever slot you have selected, you can just assemble a blueprint and it will go into that slot. If you have the armored car slot selected and you want to assemble a helicopter, it will not work because the helicopter blade is not for armored vehicles. I believe the armored car slot is used for missions without the helicopter. So now you got two scrap metals, two wires and two batteries, and you also got patrol. Now, I thought there was not going to be a separate brawl, but it looks like there will be a normal air battle, which is kind of cool, kind of like a brawl. And like I already mentioned, you will have two separate missions for scrap, wires and batteries. And it doesn't look like there is a power score limit. So we can have helicopters <laughs> up to 17,000 power score or something crazy like that. Now, I was messing around with the helicopter propellers a bit. And you can actually make something like this. This is a not an octa because it has nine rotors. But we made a missile launcher. Now, I was messing around with the helicopter propellers. And you can actually make something crazy like this. We have nine helicopter propellers and eight tires, which is kind of cool. And the top propeller is on one of the power nodes, so we can basically repair it as much as we want. This thing has eight tires, and this was <laughs> the last time a big issue in the helicopter event because people were using a lot of missiles. But we got flares now. Unfortunately, I cannot test it, so uh, we'll just have to use this. Now, something that I also noticed at different propellers have different startup times, so I'm just going to time them right now. Okay, right now we have the Hummingbird propellers equipped and in order for your creation to work with these propellers, you need at least two on the creation because if you lose one and only have one enabled, you will basically lose control of your helicopter. Kind of cool though, kind of cool. Now I tried looking for the propellers in the faction staffs because the dev said that each faction will get their own propeller, but the only propeller I can find is in the engineer faction, which is the Seagull propeller. The other ones I cannot find in any of these factions. All right, next up, let's look at the B12 mine layer. I'm not going to say Dove or Dove because I don't know how it's pronounced yet, but this thing is very interesting. Now, in the battle pass review, I did not check out the perk, but it basically says when the bomb hits environmental objects from a height less than 30 meters, the projectile will be stuck into the surface and detonate after 10 seconds or when an enemy appears nearby. If the height is greater than 30 meters, the projectile will explode with damage increased by 25%, which will not decrease with distance from the center of explosion. That last part, I don't understand, but basically, if we are above 30 meters, we will get 25% extra damage. Now on the dev stream, the dev said this was its attended mounting position, but they did not limit us. You can basically mount it however you like. Okay, I tried testing it out on the sphere, but it doesn't matter how high I am. So right now we're going to test it on the, this thing. We should be lower than, yep. 187. And this time we're going to go higher than 30 meters. Let's see the damage. 213. So it's a little bit. I only put the cabin there to make it a little bit more consistent. But yeah, you basically deal more damage if you are higher than 30 meters above the ground also like i mentioned you can basically use it as a mine layer as well if people are driving behind you you can <laughs> basically do this which is going to be cool and if they drive close enough they, you know it will detonate very cool now unfortunately if you aim it like this you do not get a crosshair which is probably what they meant by you know, it won't function normally so you basically have to fire it blindly Okay, now we're going to check out the reload of this new mine layer.
even if you mount it like this on a ground vehicle, you do not get an aiming reticle. I think the aiming reticle shows up if you are above 30 meters, but you can still use it like this. Yeah, still works out. Okay, next up, let's look at the AA Gun 4 Starfall. In the Battle Pass video, I call this a machine gun, but it is an auto cannon. I did not know that. It only does explosive damage, and this thing felt really strong when I first tested it. Now, the perk says, when the projectile fires at a distance of no more than 1.1 meters from the target, an explosion will occur, the radius of which will be increased by 100%. The damage will not decrease as you move away from the center of the explosion. Okay, this is kind of hard to test on the damage sphere, so I'm just going to use this Leviathan. If you shoot directly to the target, or at the target, you don't deal as much damage, but if you miss, you'll see a big flag explosion. And check out the damage difference. This thing is gonna be crazy, dude. So powerful, so, so powerful. The third rotation speed is decent. It's not super fast, but for mouse steering builds, it will work just fine. It doesn't have a lot of gun depression, but as we already know, it has a ton of elevation. Another thing that is pretty scary is its accuracy. This thing is pretty accurate for an auto cannon with this type of fire rate. Without any radiator, it does overheat quite quick and the cooldown is pretty decent. And the last item from the battle pass are the countermeasures, the FH3 Flux heat flares. It does not have a perk, it only says it doesn't heat up when firing. It does look a little bit powerful, but it does run out of ammo pretty quick. You start off with 50 rounds, so I made this thing to see how many, oh gosh, <laughs> to see how many flares we can fire. Oh, we got 1200 flares, lol. And we are the ultimate flare machine right now. Nanook Zappa, come at me, bro. <laughs> I wish we could get lighter once the ammo boxes run out. Okay, it's gonna take quite a while. Now, the only thing you need to remember is you can only mount two of these per creation. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is if you have a creation with mixed movement parts, helicopter propellers with wheels and grid legs or something like that, you will have two sets of stats here, in flight and when driving. Each of them will be different depending on what type of movement part you have because some movement parts have a maximum speed limit but in flight, it might be a little bit higher. Oh, we need to test out one more thing, the Hippogriff's perk. I wanna see how far you can see your enemies through walls. Okay, we are at the starting line of our test area. That should be uh, 300 meters. Let's check it out. Oh, wow, it goes way further than that. Oh, actually it is around, yeah, it's around 350 meters or 325 meters then, interesting. Okay, right now we are at the power plant. So if we activate our perk, we should see everybody around us. There you go. There's one guy here. Now that's not gonna work. We see one guy there. I see one guy over there. Now I suck with Mandrake, so I'm probably not gonna land my shots, but it could be very interesting for uh, artillery players as well. Okay, we almost got our perk again. Let's activate. Oh, wow. Ooh, you can actually see this guy over here. Can we land the shot now? Yeah, of course not. Well, well, you guys get the idea. It works, but I just can't <laughs> land the shot. Okay, right now I added a Doppler radar to our Hippogriff to see if it increases our range. Now, the last time the range was around here. Okay. Oh, it looks like it does help. Whoa, okay. That is very interesting. Oh, oh, whoa, okay. Let's go in our garage. Oh, it doesn't go that far. We need to see that bus over there. Okay, that was a bit too slow. We need to see... Oh, okay, this is the range now. So it's around 150, maybe 200 meters more range with a Doppler radar detector. That's interesting. What about non-radar detectors? We're going to try it with a keen radar. I'm not sure if this one will work. Let's activate. No, I believe you do need a radar detector. Yeah, okay. Okay. So even with the keen radar, you don't get the extra range to uh, ah, to activate the perk. That's interesting. So if we have a fuse Doppler here, this Doppler has a range of detecting enemies behind cover is 400 meters. Okay, we're now going to use an upgraded radar for range of detection in cover increased by 15%. So that should make us 
be able to see that bus all the way in the back here. Oh, it does. Oh, that's crazy. You just need to be good at aiming then. Oh, that's really, really far. Let's like across the map far. Uh, let's see if we can go even further on the map. Okay, I think if I'm here, it will be the further spot from this bus. Okay, I'm at the corner of the map. Now the bus should be over here. Let's activate. Ah, oh, we do not see it. Oh, no, we do. It's that thing over there, I believe. Oh, no, it's that bus over there. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay, we're back in the corner. The perk doesn't last too long, so we really have to be quick. So let's activate again. Because I believe... Oh, yeah, there it is. I don't think you'll be able to see all the way across the map, but you'll be able to see pretty far. And that is pretty much it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope I earned your subscription. Update should be live already or pretty soon. So, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Let me know what you think about this update and everything in the comment section down below. And, yeah, have a great day. Peace.